We're going to look at how we can create a single Databricks Unity Catalog Metastore and use it across two Azure subscriptions. You may want to do that if you have an Azure subscription for development and production. And that way, you have all your development resources in the development subscription, all your production resources in the production subscription. But a shared Unity Catalog will allow you to see your data, your development data, and your production data from either subscription, which is very, very powerful. So why do we want to do that? Well, it's because we want to have a medallion architecture, but we want the development, you know, bronze, silver, and gold to be in the development catalog, and likewise for the production catalog. So how do you do it? Well, first, you need to be a Metastore administrator and a Databricks account administrator, and then we will cover these steps. So you're going to create a Unity catalog Metastore. We did it in the production workspace. You'll create two storage accounts in Azure. You'll create two Azure connectors for Azure Databricks. You'll give each connector the appropriate permission in the Azure storage account. And then in Databricks, you'll create storage account credentials, external locations, you'll test it, and then you'll create two catalogs, one for dev and one for production. Now, I'm not going to go and do this twice, right? I'm just going to show you really quickly how to do these steps once, and then you can just do it again for the other environment. OK, let's get to it then. So the first thing that you do is you create a Unity Catalog Metastore. The way you do that is you go into your Manage Account screen. Again, you have to be a Metastore admin and a Databricks account administrator. And then once you're there, if you click on Data, you'll see Metastore. And then if you don't see the Metastore there, you need to create the Metastore. Once you create the Metastore here, you need to associate a workspace. I have a workspace here already. It needs to be a premium subscription. It cannot be the standard pay-as-you-go subscription. It needs to be premium. Then once you've associated it, that's step one. Okay. Step two is you need to create two storage accounts. So here's my storage account. You can see the storage account. Um, once the storage account is created, just to, uh, a couple of things that you need to be aware of, is um, you need to turn off um, soft deletes. Uh, Databricks Unity Catalog is not compatible with soft deletes. And the second thing that you need to do is you need to make sure that it's an Azure Data Lake Gen 2 storage, that it supports a hierarchical namespace, meaning it needs to be able to support file paths, folders and subfolders and file paths. Um, and that's all in a, a online documentation. You don't need to worry about that right now. The second thing that we do is we create an access connector for Azure Databricks. And it's really simple. All you need to do is find that when you create the resource and name it something. This is effectively a managed service principle that gives you access to that storage account. So once you have one, in this case, you can tell I'm using this for my development environment. And this is my development data platform storage account. Once you have one, then what you do is you go into um, access control. You go into role assignments. And then you want to assign it as a storage blob data contributor. So just add that connector account to the storage blob data contributor. And what you're doing is you're giving it rights to that storage account. And that's all it needs. That little bit of magic is what allows Unity Catalog to reach across subscriptions and use the correct blob storage account when it goes to create things. OK, that's what you do in Azure. After you've done that in Azure, then you go back into Databricks. And then we go into data catalog here. OK. And then under external data down here below, you want to first create a storage credential, create credential. I've already created one. What you do when you create a credential is you name it, and then you use the connector ID of that connector account over here, this resource ID. Just copy and paste that resource ID, and you put it right here, and then just you know, put some comments in it and click create. It's that simple. Once you've done that, you go to external locations. And you can see I've already created one, but um, I can create location. You name it. You pick the right storage credential, the thing you just created, in this case, my development storage credential. And then the URL to the blob path um, of the storage account that you want. So this would be like the container at and then the blob path that you, we use when we connect to any um, storage account URL. So once you've done that, all of that gives you this magic. This is the great thing. When you go to create a catalog, you can name the catalog. And then for the storage location, you pull it down, and you can pick either development or production.
So if you create your development catalog, you put it in the development storage location. If you create the production catalog, you put it in your production storage location. And that's the last time you have to specify location. You're done. Now, when you go to create your schemas and your objects, they just get saved in the exact place in the storage account they're supposed to without um, you have to having to specify it every time. And that is enormously powerful. I hope that helps you. Have a great day.